In December 2017, the Regina Quapel Health Region and the Saskatoon Health Region formed to join the Saska Saskatchewan Health Authority. And today, uh, we're gonna meet Bree and Laura and a client named Barb, who are gonna tell us a little bit about a program that started before the merge, but has really taken off here in the Regina area. So, uh, Bree, I wanna talk to you a little bit about this community program that you started. Tell us what it's all about. So, we used to have, in the Regina Capel Health Region, uh, one COPD rehab program, so chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It's a lung disease. Um, it's been known in the past as primar primarily a smoker's disease. We had one program uh, here in the Regina area, and we just found that our wait lists were getting so long uh, that uh, f folks were not getting the information and the help that they needed, so we decided that through primary health care that we would offer more programs based on the different networks that we have in the Regina area. So when now we have four programs that are running, we're getting more help out there, more programming out there to these folks so that the wait lists are shorter mm -hmm. and they're getting the help that they need uh, quicker. So where are these four networks? Sure, so we have a north network, we have a central network, we have an east network, and we have a south network in the Regina area. We have a respiratory therapist who's new We've always worked in the acute centers, so in the hospitals, but now we work in the community as well. We have four respiratory therapists out in the community who are certified respiratory educators, and each one of them runs their own program now. Yeah. And when we talked about, um, you know, you gave me the four areas, but it's, it's, you also go a little bit outside. So, you know, the north area may handle more than just Regina. Correct. So just for ease, we'll just say that um, within about a 30-minute drive, of the perimeter of, Reg of the Regina area, we will travel out to that distance as well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about, um, you're, you're coming into houses and we're gonna talk to Laura next, but uh, the, the program, we, we did this because it's getting a little more difficult to get to the hospitals and this just makes it easier for the client. Right, we're finding that COPD is, is such a, an invasive disease um, that affects the lungs and the person's ability to ambulate or to walk that getting out and making a trip to the hospital to visit a physician or to go to an appointment um, is quite troublesome. And so in order to combat that, we've taken a, a different look at it and we flipped it around and we're now going to them. Now we talked earlier about this program was launched with COPD, but there are six chronic diseases or um, chronic, diseases. chronic diseases that you ultimately that's the goal you want to cover. Correct. So in primary health care, we follow six chronic conditions based on admission rates to the emergency room and to the hospital. COPD historically has always been number one, and that's why we started off with COPD. Next year, we will um, study the, the data again and pick the next chronic disease and move on to that one. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Bree. All right, well, let's talk to Laura now. Um, Laura is a respiratory therapist here, and you're doing the the home programs in the east. Yes, we're focusing on keeping people um, out of the hospital. So self-management is bit has been a big priority for us through the rehab, through um, home visits, and visits right after somebody comes out of the hospital to make sure they know how to keep themselves out of the hospital and keep themselves healthy. So when you come to a home, what is your role at the home? Um, Number one, to make sure that they have everything they need um, for follow-up visits to their physician, that they know how to use the medications that they've been prescribed, so we'll go over inhaler techniques, um, to make sure that they are still healthy and that they can um, have a plan of action for the next time that they start to feel sick and that we can hopefully um, get them what they need before they end up in the hospital. So let's go back a little bit and talk about the causes of COPD. What, what is causing this? Um, smoking. Smoking is the number one cause. Not all smokers will get COPD, but that is the number one cause. And then there are some genetic causes as well. And what are some of the, you know, if someone's out there thinking, um, I have been a smoker or a pollution or something, what are some symptoms that someone might show? Um, they get sicker longer than other people. They... Um, um, find that they get short of breath easy. Um, a lot of older people think that they are getting short of breath when they go do things because they are older, but they should really be checked out. Um, a chronic cough is very important to watch, and if you are over 40, have a chronic cough, you're pr producing sputum, you should get a spirometry test done to check for COPD. Okay. 
And I don't think this is something that, you know what, I can take a pill and it goes away. So what is the treatment? Um, the treatment is to take your inhalers and to try to stay healthy. Get your vaccinations is a big push that we're on right now, uh, both for flu and pneumonia vaccines. Wow. Yeah. Now for the people that um, uh, are maybe being treated and, or, or not, what are some of the triggers maybe that, that trigger them to, to go into a cough or, or something? Um, it can be anything, and it differs for different people. Um, humidity is one. The cold weather is a big one. A lot of people with COPD don't get out and do a lot of things in the winter, um, so we have rehab programs for them to come to. Um, some other triggers are dust, pollen, anything like that that can start to trigger a cough, and, and um, exercise and, and exertion are big things. Good. Now, I, d I want people to know that, I mean, if you have COPD and, and you have someone, you've been diagnosed, you can still have a quality of life. You can, and the important thing is to stay active. So with our COPD rehab programs, we do the education portion, and then we do a workout, and we try to build strength with um, resistance bands and uh, muscular, and we try to do cardio to keep up their endurance. So we are now going to meet Barb, who is a uh, model uh, COPD patient of Laura's. And I want to thank you for letting us into your house. You're most welcome. <laughs> so now, Barb, you were diagnosed with COPD in 1986. Tell us, 96. 1996. Tell us a little bit about when you were diagnosed to how far you've come. Well, when I was diagnosed, it was really, it was more the coughing and a little bit of the shortness of breath. Um, I'd actually come into the hospital for um, pre-op testing and it was a nurse that picked it up and called the respiratory doctor that was on call. And because of my age, he was concerned because at the age I was, I shouldn't be having the difficulty breathing that I was doing. And I lived on a farm, so it was a lot of things that combined. But I was in the rural, so the education wasn't there that I really needed until we moved to the city. And getting involved with the rehab program that my doctor had, had told me that I should go to made the start of the difference in what I could do, and I got better inhalers, better medication, more knowledge, and what was out there available to us that have P COPD. Good. Now, uh, I had asked you earlier, you are 100% on oxygen. Yes. I've been continuous for just about two years now. I was on exertional, so it was anything that I did, um, whether it was going to walk, work in the garden, um, play with my grandchildren, but I was still able to do certain things without having it, but now it's not 24-7. Now, going back to uh, when you were diagnosed, uh, were you a smoker? Yes, I was. And would you have done, now with the condition you're in, would you, you know, talking to people out there, would you do anything differently? Oh yes, I would never have smoked. And been more careful of what I did on the farm because we had cattle and chickens and sheep and all the livestock and um, we farmed. So there was a lot of dust intake and things like that that I know now were detrimental to my health. Now, I know that th this has not stopped you, and that's what uh, your respiratory therapist has said about you. you, and that's why you're the model citizens. You just keep going. Um, you have a very large family, and uh, beautiful family. I see lots of, pic lots of pictures around your house, and y you want to keep active for them. Let's talk a little bit about family, and uh, I want to talk about your Christmas. Okay. Family is everything to me, always has been. And... We decided, actually it was two of our children that live in Alberta, I've got, we've got four children, that decided that Christmas just wasn't working well with having to go to the other side and having people on the roads. And there's always a child that's sick at Christmas time. And that's one thing that my kids understand, that they can't be coming around me with colds and mm -hmm. flu and sickness because I get it worse. So they decided that why don't we have Christmas in the summertime in August. So that's what we do. We all have campers and we all take a week off and we go camping and we still do the Christmas meal. We don't do the gifts. It's all about memories now and every family takes in what they would normally have spent and just have interspersed it and it's all about family. 
and to me that is so important. And I still do the Christmas turkey, the Christmas dinner, the Christmas day we spec we set, set one day aside that that is definitely like Christmas and everything's done. There's the gingerbread houses made and, and decorated and it, it is Christmas and it's um, a wonderful way for all the cousins to get together and spend time together for my for children and their spouses to get together and for Terry and I to just sit back and enjoy the fruits of our labor. <laughs> Now, we talk about um, how has your family reacted and are, are they trying to, oh, mom, you don't need to do that. But you do. You do need to stay active. Yeah, I, I get that quite a bit. And I keep telling them that I will tell you when I can't do it. I There's certain things that I can do. Like, yeah, I can't go out and row a boat and I have difficulty doing I can't cl climb the hills or that kind of thing but I can still take my portable oxygen and go for a walk a slow walk with the kids but the rehab program helps out a lot because it, it builds up my endurance of different things that I can do so Barb what advice would you give to any other of our viewers that may uh, may have symptoms of COPD or not sure or might be concerned what would you what advice would you give them I would first off tell them to go visit their family doctor and tell them their concerns and ask for a spirometry test and that will give you a lung function and go from there and don't be scared of it because and I think that's the concern of a lot of people I don't want to find out but it's better finding out than going through life and not having the things that are going to help you because it, it will impact your life if you don't have the tools and the knowledge that are out there for us. There are an estimated 30,000 Regina citizens living with COPD but undiagnosed. If you feel that you may be one of them and you may have symptoms, please call your doctor and renew your life.